Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're in here at the Plasma Cam. This is Bolt Works Part 2. All right, I've taken my pencil sketch that I did in at the uh, set of forks uh, and the top of the lathe bed, determining exactly how I wanted to set this up, and we drew it into the Plasma Cam here, and I have four pieces that we're going to be cutting out of that 5H plate right there. All right, let's take a close look at the drawing up here so that you get an idea of what I have here on the screen. All right, to the left here on the drawing, I have my assembly slice away. This is the, the, the center of the boring bar here and the flat surface right here is the top of my lathe uh, bed that will T-nut bolt it down through. This plate here on the bottom is that one. The strong backs are over here. And this flat plate that will be clamped to the back side of the fork assembly is right here. I hand drew a little screw jack underneath there just to kind of give you an idea. So there will be C-clamps going this way, screw jack there, and we'll align the bar to go down through the center of the bore. Alright, now I have these pieces all laid out on our plate. We have a 24 by 48 inch piece of 5 8 flat plate in there. And uh, we have seven openings that we're going to have to start in the middle of the plate. And then I have an extended pierce line that come in from the edge of the plate to cut the ODs of the rest of uh, the part. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and pull this little contact tip that I have on here. And I modified one quite a few years ago, and I made it into a pointer. So it's just cone shape on the top of it. And what I'm going to do is just lightly screw this in here, and I'm going to put the gun back in place. And we're going to pinpoint exactly each of the pierce points on this plate for those seven areas we need to uh, cut out. All right, I don't necessarily need to have my contact on there all right now I'm just gonna move it on the screen till I find my pierce point then I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with a sharpie and then we're gonna go ahead and take it and uh, center punch it okay let's uh, we'll start up here at the top And the first pierce will be right there. You can just bring this down close. All right, and we're just gonna mark two axes here, right there, and right there. Let's go to the next one. It will be right there. Pierce points aren't necessarily uh, in line with each other from side to side holes and things like that. The uh, computer randomly puts them in its in their uh, pick pick position within the hole. All right. Now we'll be going over to uh, the two strong backs. <clears throat> There's the first one. Okay, we're just moving that out of our way for right now. We'll bring it back and we'll go ahead and we'll change out our consumables and put on, re put on our contact there. Um, all right, center punch it. All right. Now, uh, basically, oh, about 300 uh, thousands drill bit. I've got several of them in here just because... I don't want to have to waste time sharpening any if I, I needed to. All right. 
All right, I'm going to go get my chair so I can step up on the table there. Okay, got our chair and our knee pad. And we'll just start at our farthest one out here. Now, if you come down and you happen to be in line with one of the grates there, it's going to be it's going to be pretty close, uh, and you don't want to break a drill going through it. So sometimes that'll happen. Okay, I think we actually hit one there, and I just. Much better drill bit. All right, that was pretty painless. All right, I'll go get my uh, my magnet wand. Okay, picks up the majority of all the big long ones. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that first drill bit actually moved that thing. We'll, we'll just have to take a look at it. And uh, we're going to go to each of our pierce points here just to double check it. Right on. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna to check one down here on the bottom of that plate. And right there. Okay, perfect. All right, check one over at the distance. Right there. Okay. All right. Happy with that. I just rubbed that clean on the face there and yeah. screw that back in there. Now I always tighten this down just a little tiny bit uh, more than finger tight. Uh, it does make contact and you never want that contact to be faulty. Uh, this is hot. It's pretty clean hot uh, face on that uh, plate there. Sometimes have a problem with it, sometimes not. All right, this consumable is still in really good shape, but I'm putting in a brand new one just to do this job. We are working with 5 8 uh, material, and I'd like it to be in the best shape that we can. I use a round wire brush and, uh, and a standard stainless steel brush. This is a starting cartridge on the uh, 
thermodynamics uh, torch. All right, and this is 60 amp uh, nozzle and contact electrode, if you might. 8215 and 8210 are the numbers for those of you who've got uh, plasma machines know what I'm talking about. Um, now I do, I use this old jelly and uh, I find that just lightly coating in between where the uh, starter and the nozzle meet, that works really good. And I do this face here also, keeps BBs from sticking to it, works really good. Alright, and that's tight. All right, let's see how, how we're doing. That's our normal normal position right there. Cool. All okay, that's it. We're uh, we're ready to go. Um, we're gonna go for the plate that bolts down to the carriage top first and work our way on over that way there. Air's on, test on, our dryer's on, our deskin is uh, all fresh. We're going to turn on one vacuum for right now. Okay, and we're zeroed in on this first one here, and we're going to be starting uh, basically right down, down here <clears throat> for the outside cut, and then it'll probably start somewhere up on one of these other holes in this area right here. Actually, I can hit this and uh, cut preview, and it will it'll actually start on this hole right here. Okay, right back there, we cut out a test piece just to make sure all of our settings are fine. And then we knocked the dross off the back side. That was just a one-inch circle. There's our pierce in and pierce out. Surface condition looks pretty good. We're going to be happy if we get that finish on our parts right here. All right. At 60 amps, I'm feeding about 10 inches a minute. And I think our cut height is about an eighth of an inch. Here we go. Okay, here goes the edge cut now. There we go. Okay, I'm getting uh, getting too high of a cut there.
Okay, we're just moving it over to the side there. That edge looks good down in there, except for where we had that little problem of starting. And we don't really know what that is, but that'll dress up with the grinder a little bit. Um, this is under a grid right there. That right there could probably tap out. Actually, it's under... It's loose, but it's under this... Uh, or over that grid right there. All right. Next plate. All right, let's go for the first uh, back brace or angle support. It's gonna do the inside bore first. Okay, we're going to take just a small break here before we get to uh, the next one here. And I think that slug should pop out. Yes, it should. Oh, a little steam over there. Uh, very nice looking finish in there. Oh, all right. Okay, I think we will uh, go ahead and put this into manual mode and we'll go ahead and we'll trim away a few of these um, uh, webs in here because these things will just pop out a lot easier and also it eliminates it from the drop of that the rest of that materials that we have there for some other little project that might come along. I knew that 5 8 plate that's been hanging around here for a year had come into a nice tool. That's why I call I call all my raw stock tooling because it can okay we're gonna put this in the manual mode here and uh, first off we just kind of get this down here to where we can reach it and 
we pull off our I'll make uh, clip there we just release the trigger all right flip the switch all right we're ready to go well let's get some air suction here Sweet. All right, we'll bring you in closer, uh, but for right now, we're setting this up. We got the three, uh, three insert holder here that holds our DNMP on the side, so we get the uh, the extra cuts off of them. This is excellent work to uh, uh, just chug away with some of those. Now we're not going to be hogging off a whole bunch of material. We're just going to make it square, just square. We're setting up off of these two surfaces here and the table. This is still loosely clamped both sides. I'm going to square the bottom plate, which I've got this one setting nice. The webs, everything feels really good. I'm not going to try to line up the feet or anything else like that. I'm just going to lay it down and I know that this is going to be square and we're going to tighten this down now. Alright, and we're just going to double check that, and we're happy with that. Look at that, another flat surface. <laughs> Not for long, it, it'll have some stuff on it here. Um, Alright. Somewhere in there. Somewhere in there, okay. We just want to touch off a little bit here. All right, little tiny break there, or up and down. Let's see what do we have for speed. Uh, first, we want the other direction. Okay, we can put this in fast. That looks pretty good. Okay, I I wiped the ways and oiled them and brought them out this way here, but I'm gonna go ahead and reach behind here. before I go back in. Fresh oil. I know we're going to be throwing some chips down in here and our most of our travel is going to be going this way here. Now I'm not going to run fluid because we're off the table. If we were up on here I'd run coolant. Um, but we're not, we're not hogging off enough material to worry about the coolant. Alright. I don't know if that's too fast or not. We'll give it a shot. Come in and touch. There's a touch. Looks like we could probably go at least 50. Uh, we're going about an inch a minute. Let's give that a shot. Looks like we're pretty good on the cutter. Up and down. Okay, let's, uh, let's come over to this other side here now, and cool. Now, if it takes just about the same amount off of this side as, as it does the other side there, meaning the percentage of flat on there, then we would say that um, our plasma cut was held pretty close to the squareness, at least by a precision Michitoyo square off of a 
nice square Kearney and Tracker table. Pretty darn equal to me. All right. Looks like about fifty thousands would clean that up. All right, there's 50,000 right there. We'll let that come across. Okay, this side here actually shows probably about 20,000 more, 10, 10 20,000 more make that square. I want it 100% flat across there because we're going to be clamping down and it's, we're going to use this flat surface to hold these as square as possible. Nice finish. We'll let that run all the way across that face. And then we'll spin these 90 degrees. We're gonna put a, I'm gonna go get a couple seat clamps because we'll put one here and one over here. These will be overhanging that side of the table so it'll still hold them in a full set. And we can square off of that side on that. Good. Okay, now this area here sticks out past it, but I left a little relief in here. So we're not going to have to worry about it. We're just going to come back past where we clean. This is nice and true. It's not back cutting a lot, so we have a nice smooth surface here. It looks like we're going to have a one pass clean up here. There we are.
Look pretty good. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and take our little air tool here. I'm going down off of the edge so nothing rolls back up on his face. So I should be able to take these and stand them up and they'll stay. All right, I got a few things to do here. We're, we're not gonna be using our tool post, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the way. Set it down here in the pan. We don't need the wrench. We're gonna set our compound kind of in line here. So it doesn't overhang, we can have this whole plate completely open. The only time we might change it is if this is in the way at all, which I don't really think it's going to be. It doesn't have to be snug or in any degrees. It just needs to be in that position there. Okay, and so we don't have to look at the grease on there. Okay, the rest of our setup, and by the way, this, these holes line up right down with the t-nut slot so we're going to grab the t-nuts and we'll be able to come over here put that together plenty of clearance around this brake which we're not going to need for our operation but we needed to have the plate be able to go flat down on the top of the carriage here now we're going to pick where we want our angle plate to be positioned and we're going to center it off of the center here with a square we'll put the table even so that we have the center of our travel here and, and everything's happy there. We'll come down with a square, create a line, square it with the table here, the side of the carriage, so that we can position these in the area we want so that our center line of our bore is equal to the back side of our fork assembly there. Okay, I found two parallels that are about a quarter inch. I can push that against the edge of the carriage there. That holds this nice and square. So that our center point is over our plate. We, we have our <clears throat> framing square along that edge. And now we can take our Michitoyo square and we're going to slide it in until we line it up with our center right there. Now we're going to put a Sharpie line straight across there. I'm going to set these off to the side for a minute. Because we took and we took our square and we set it off the edge and then we compensated for the two and a quarter of the bore and came out to the edge and we're at uh, just shy of three and a half but we're going to mark it off from that line three and a half inches. right there now three and a half inches is going to be the face of the backboard or the the 90 of the square mount here all right now the only other thing that we need to look at to go set it up is where do we want where do we want to put the strong backs and They're basically, this face here is 5 eighths of an inch back from that line. 
and uh, get the other one up here. We do want to be able to clamp that flat surface up here and we want to make this as rigid as possible so if we put them too close into the center we're going to be defeating our purpose here okay i know it's a little hard to see it from that direction there but basically we have a 13 a 13 wide plate coming in here which will overhang a an inch on this side here and an inch of this side here of, of the base plate here. Our parts uh, 10 inch on the outside and I may want to actually cl be clamping uh, on the outside of these webs right here. So we're gonna we're gonna settle for seven and a half inches in between here. This will be three quarters of an inch off of the forward side here and we are two and five eighths off of this side over here and then we'll set this face up here when we clamp on our plate and square it off of this with a a square and then we'll clamp this down here uh, the, everything will be clamped and then we'll do our tacks and then our full well beads uh, just one well bead on on each four of these tabs right here all the way around and uh, so we're gonna go in and get set up and do that now Okay, I'm ready. I'm going to buzz some wall on this. I've got the table cleared up of all my scales and and uh, measuring instruments there. Okay, there we go. Stinger's all set, ready to go. Here's a couple pictures of looking at different angles around the setup because where you're at there, which I want to keep that camera away from this area here as well. We only have the front and back of the lower sections there and the top and bottom around those bosses those are the only areas we're gonna we're gonna weld we're gonna go ahead and put a tack on the outside on the four points that we can see there and we're gonna reach in and put a tack in on the lower side here and then we'll probably be rolling this thing around on the bench after that And I think I'll just go ahead and I'm going to start right here at the bottom. Uh, you do have to click the machine on the right settings. By the way my stinger's hanging in there, I can't quite get it there. Okay, here we go.
Okay, I'm gonna try to uh, reach inside and uh, and get attack across the inside of that foot there. Perfect. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay. I think ready uh, to go ahead and uh, I'm going to take the, find my needle gun and just scale the tacks and uh, then I'm going to go ahead and flip her on her side and I'll hit, uh, I hit all four of those welds on one side, flip it to the other side as well. Alright, we turned on our fan there so it's going to be cranking up and starting to take some of the plume out that was starting to develop in here. Alright, everything looks good there. I keep uh, blocking and all kinds of things underneath this table here. It really comes in handy. Um, and I like the catch-all tray on the side. It has a lot of uses. Okay, I'm going to go for the inside, I'm going to roll it over, do the inside, and then we'll roll it and do the outside and do the outside. Crank up just a little bit more amperage. Pretty good size chunk of steel here.
Okay, all done. We gotta take off our handle here to uh, get inside. It happens sometimes. All right. Pretty good, not too much rocky rocky, and uh, we'll check this with a square when we get in there. And a couple little rubs. Fantastic, all right. We'll let it cool down. We're gonna go have a Pepsi break, and we'll get it mounted up on the machine. <laughs> 